Hi! Welcome to the 2013 Fall Edition of Psycho360, which is Psycho's online news resource that aims to keep you up to date on topics likely of interest to Psycho members. To start us off, Psycho member Dr. Deborah French will be highlighting several of the exciting Psycho-related events that were held at this year's AACC Annual Meeting in Houston. There are some great photos of your colleagues and friends in this podcast, so you don't want to miss it. Please take a moment to watch and reminisce about the fun and memorable time shared at the 2013 AACC Annual Meeting. This podcast may also serve as a reference for similar Psycho-related activities and award opportunities available in the future. Next, learn about the upcoming Psycho Mentoring Minutes Initiative from Psycho Committee member Dr. Shannon Heyman in an interview conducted by Psycho member Dr. Joe Elkuri. The first ever Psycho Mentoring Minutes podcast is set to release this fall, so please take a moment to learn what it is all about. Next, hear insight from Dr. Nader Rafai, Editor-in-Chief of the Clinical Chemistry Journal, about the exciting new question bank resource and program offered by the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. In this podcast, Psycho Committee member Dr. Mark Servinsky will further reveal Psycho members' cumulative responses to the recent Psycho360 Fun Facts Survey. Lastly, do you have research ideas but need some startup funding? In this podcast, Psycho member Dr. Kaylin Olson highlights a great research opportunity through the Van Slyke Foundation General Research Grant with unique insight and advice from two recipients of this grant, Drs. Linda Hasadri and Mari DeMarco. On behalf of the Psycho Committee and Psycho360 Subcommittee, we would like to thank the many individuals who contributed to this podcast edition and thank all of you for watching and contributing to the success of the Psycho360 podcast. Thank you, and we hope that you enjoy this edition. Today we would like to take some time to revisit the many cycle events that took place at the 2013 AACC Annual Meeting in Houston and to congratulate the cycle members who won awards. It was another busy meeting and I hope you had time to enjoy it. This year's cycle workshop on Saturday, July 27th was titled Practical Approaches to Sustainable Planning and Achieving Lean Success. The first section called how can my lab achieve lean success? So James Peters demystifying lean and Dr. Tom Burgess showing us how lean helped his laboratory improve workflow, turnaround time and the cost per reportable test. A breakout session led by James Peters allowed participants to determine which processes in their labs could benefit from lean tools, which was definitely eye-opening. In the second section, Dr. Anne Granowski reminded participants how great the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council is. Please listen to Dr. Mark Servinsky's interview with Dr. Nader Rafai in a later section of this podcast to learn more information about this useful resource. Dr. Paul Gianetto then mystified us with magic while he discussed some tips for justifying and purchasing new instrumentation and Dr. Carmen Wiley shared her personal journey from graduate student to laboratory director. After we were done with the important science stuff, it was time for a more relaxed social gathering in the form of the cycle reception. Here people caught up with friends and collaborators as well as meeting new ones over some light refreshments. As you can see from the pictures, everyone had a great time with the traveling photo booth. On Monday afternoon, it was time for the student oral presentations. Four abstracts were chosen and each of the authors gave a short presentation of their work. Thanks to the sponsorship of the Van Slyke Foundation, awards were presented to the four presenters seen in this photo. After the oral presentations, there was a poster contest. A number of cycle members and other distinguished clinical chemists participated as judges and spent some time talking to the poster presenters about their exciting work. Once all the voting was complete, a number of awards were presented to the cycle members shown at the bottom of the slide, again thanks to sponsorship by the Van Slyke Foundation. Congratulations to all of the presenters. It is exciting to hear about the new clinical studies that are being carried out by the students every year. Once the oral and poster presentations were completed, it was time for the joint ABCC cycle reception. This event again provides a great opportunity for networking in an informal setting, 
as well as catching up with old friends and making new ones. It is also at this reception where a number of awards are given out. The Vance Lake Foundation and Cycle partner together each year to award domestic travel grants to individuals in need of sponsorship to attend the annual AECC meeting. These awards are $2,000 each and the eight recipients of the 2013 travel grants are shown in this photograph. In addition, several students also receive travel awards generously sponsored by Beckman Coulter and the Van Slyke Foundation. Being given the opportunity to attend the annual meeting as well as the cycle events is very beneficial in terms of networking and meeting other people in your field as well as making new friends. Applications for these travel awards are highly competitive, so congratulations to everyone that received one. Congratulations to Dr. Alison Woodworth from Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, recipient of the Cycle Service Award for her exceptional contributions to the field of clinical chemistry and service to both AACC and Cycle. This is very well deserved. Congratulations also to Dr. Tom Ansley from the University of Michigan Ann Arbor recipient of the Cycle Mentorship Award. As you know, Dr. Ansley is a Deputy Editor for Clinical Chemistry and he has also been instrumental in providing advice on scientific writing in his series of articles in this same journal. We strongly recommend you consult these. Congratulations, Dr. Ansley. During this reception, the new ABCC diplomates are also recognized. Congratulations to every one of them. Your hard work and dedication has paid off. It's hard to believe that the abstract deadline for the 2014 AECC annual meeting will soon be upon us, early in the new year. But it is exciting to think that in a few short months we will be doing this all again. See you at the Cycle-sponsored events in Chicago in July 2014. Hi. We are excited to be joined today by Cycle Committee member Dr. Shannon Heyman, Director of Clinical Chemistry and Mass Spectrometry at Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago and Assistant Professor of Pathology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. This is my first time participating in a Cycle 360 segment. Welcome, Shannon. We're happy to have you. I hear that Cycle will soon be introducing a new feature called Mentoring Minutes. Can you please tell us more about this exciting new feature? Sure. We've been doing Mentor of the Month since 2005, and the Cycle Committee really felt that this was a valuable program, but that it was time to change the format. In our discussion about ways to actually do that, we decided to try something more interactive and modeled off of NPR's popular StoryCorps program. So how will this be different than the existing Mentor of the Month transcribed interviews featured on AACC's Cycle website? Instead of selecting a mentor and interviewing them via a series of questions that's posted on the website with a picture and a bio, this time we're going to record interviews with a mentor-mentee pair and edit the session to a few-minute segment where we're hoping to highlight a specific scenario or topic. The audio file and its transcript with the photo of the pair will then be posted to our website for now and potentially in other formats in the future. Since we're featuring a mentor and mentee pair, and changing the frequency from monthly to quarterly, we'll title this new program Mentoring Minutes. I'm really excited about the new format. We recorded the first session while at the annual meeting in Houston. Conducting the interview in person and recording the responses actually really enhances and I think transforms this mentoring program because you really get the human elements of the relationship that may be difficult to convey through a written-only medium. Excellent. And so will we continue to see both or is this replacing the website version of it? The plan is for the new program to replace the Mentor of the Month segment starting in October. And how are the mentor-mentee pairs selected? At this point, the pairs are selected during the very intense brainstorming sessions that occur during the cycle committee meetings. Wink, wink. However, we're also open and interested to hear ideas from our cycle members. So if people have ideas for a great mentor-mentee pair, or suggestions for scenarios or topics they'd like to hear about during these sessions, please post them to the Cycle listserv or email any of the committee members. Any chance you'd let us in on the names of the upcoming mentor mentees? Sure, we can do the big reveal in this Cycle 360 podcast. 
Our first pair is mentor David Grenache from ARUP Laboratories and his mentee, Dina Green, who is now with Kaiser Permanente Laboratories in Northern California. We have plans for recording sessions with Greg Miller and Lori Bachman, and also with Corinne Fonts and her mentee, Marion Snyder, and those will all be released in 2014. David and Dina's interview is actually scheduled for release in October. Thank you for the sneak peek. And uh, how will the interviews be conducted? A member of the cycle committee will facilitate the interview by providing a brief introduction and then asking questions related to a specific scenario or topic that's relevant to the mentor-mentee pair. The questions will change for each pair as our goal is to provide a new facet of the mentor-mentee relationship with each segment. And will cycle members be allowed to email questions to the committee to direct the mentor-mentee pair? Absolutely. Again, if any cycle member has an idea for potential mentor-mentee pairs, or questions, scenarios, or topics that they're interested in hearing about from the pairs, we'd love to hear the ideas. You can do this through either emailing the cycle committee member or posting it on the cycle listserv. Shannon, thank you so much for sharing this exciting new feature with us. When can we expect to see this feature on AACC's website? Sure. We expect the first segment to be available in October and we'll notify cycle members via email in the listserv. And thanks again for allowing me to introduce this new feature from Cycle. We're really excited about it and hope our members will find it fun and informative. Thank you. Hi, welcome to this portion of Cycle 360. I'm very glad to introduce Dr. Nader Rafai, Professor of Pathology at Harvard Medical School and Director of Clinical Chemistry at Boston Children's Hospital. Nader, welcome, and thank you for spending some time with the Cycle360 audience. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Nader will be helping us with our Cycle360 fun fact for this installment of Cycle360. Both questions for this podcast focused on the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council, a free online hub of superb training materials for trainees in laboratory medicine. The first question of this episode was... The Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council is a unique and free online program in the field of laboratory medicine that provides trainees with various educational materials, including podcasts, pearls of laboratory medicine, and other useful presentations. The Trainee Council is soon to add another exciting and highly anticipated feature to the website that will benefit all trainees in laboratory medicine. What is this feature? A. A photo sharing website to keep in touch with colleagues. B. A question bank covering a variety of topics including chemistry, microbiology, and transfusion medicine. C. A link to all the Clinical Chemistry Journal Club articles. D. Links to all of the AACC listserv pages. The second question, also focusing on the Trainee Council, was In how many languages is the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council currently available? A. One language, English. B. Two languages, English and Greek. C. Three languages, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. D. Four languages, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. Nader, can you help our audience members to find the correct answers to these fun fact questions? Sure, with pleasure. Uh, Mark, as you know, uh, Clinical Chemistry launched an ambitious program two years ago called the uh, Clinical Chemistry Training Council to uh, reach out to trainees in lab medicine and uh, their mentors. The journal publishes routinely educational materials uh, such as uh, clinical case study, journal club, Q&A, and inspiring minds and it also produces very popular podcasts so the idea was to create a platform to house these materials but as we had the infrastructure available we added two lecture series one is the pearls which are lectures uh, of 10 minutes they are peer-reviewed, and they deal with a, a particular analyte or a diagnosis. And the other one is our webcasts, which are formal lectures. 
We also added a chat room called Council Chat to increase interaction among the trainees. There are two unique features of this program uh, that I am particularly proud of. The first is the fact that it is free of charge in order not to exclude anyone who is not as privileged as we are in this country. And the second, there is a multilingual program. You know, most people on this planet don't speak English, and even those who speak it as a second language prefer learning in their mother tongue. So the program at the present time is available in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. We are planning to launch Japanese at the end of the year. Next year, we will launch it in uh, Russian and Turkish. And in the following year, in French and hopefully in Arabic. As of this morning, we have 3,975 registrants from 136 countries, about 20% of them from the United States and about 40% from developing countries. So what I have described to you uh, so far is phase one of this program. In the past year and a half, we have been working on phase two, which involves two things. First, to broaden the scope from clinical chemistry to all aspects of laboratory medicine. And second, is to launch a question bank for those in the US and the UK who are planning to take board certifications or simply those trainees who wish to assess their own knowledge. So we are broadening the scope of the pearls to include all disciplines of laboratory medicine. And we are following a curriculum-based structure to make sure we are covering all important aspects of a particular uh, discipline. We are also building courses in areas where we feel there is a need, such as in study design. For the exam questions, we have just launched this feature with about uh, 1,000 peer-reviewed questions on web-based and mobile-based applications. The questions are clustered in a group of 10 and ranked in the level of difficulty. And upon the successful completion of a test, a certificate can be emailed either uh, to the trainee or directly to his or her uh, mentor. We have at uh, our disposal at the present time over 3,000 questions, which we will be uh, migrating to the site in the weeks and uh, months uh, to come. The last thing I want to mention is we are launching a clinical pathology residence network as part of the training council to provide the residents a place they can uh, call home. So I sincerely hope that the listeners who have not yet registered will do so by going to www.traineecouncil.org. It is really very easy. It takes less than a minute to complete. And I hope you will find it useful. And don't hesitate to let me know if you have any suggestion or feedback. Nader, thank you so much for spending some time with the Cycle 360 audience. I know, My pleasure. I know it's been a tremendous amount of work to get the training council to its current point, and I can't wait for the question bank to go live. It'll be a truly excellent resource for the pathology residents and laboratory medicine fellows alike. So I encourage the audience, just as Nader did, if you haven't already done so, go to the training council website. It's a free and excellent resource for trainees, and most likely their mentors too. So now, let's review the Cycle 360 fun fact questions. For the first question, as Nader has pointed out, the correct answer is B. The Trainee Council will soon have a question bank that will cover clinical chemistry, microbiology, and transfusion medicine. 
when we review the responses we received, we can see that we didn't fool too many of you. 90% of the respondents correctly identified that a question bank was in the works. On to question number two. The correct answer to the question of how many languages the Trainee Council is currently available in is D. Four languages, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. As you can see here, many of the respondents were not aware of the numerous languages the Trainee Council is currently available in. And recall that many more translations are in the works. Nader, thank you again so much for your time and for helping us with the Cycle 360 Fun Fact. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Today I would like to share a great opportunity for young investigators to obtain research funding during fellowship or early employment. You will get unique insights from two colleagues who use the AACC Van Slyke Foundation General Research Grant to positively impact their careers. The General Research Grant is one of many grants and awards supported by generous donations to AACC's Van Slyke Foundation. They are also the funders of the Student Awards Program at the annual meeting, Cycle Awards, and the Past President Scholarship, among other great opportunities. The General Research Grant is intended to support primarily young investigators to fund small projects that the investigator may otherwise have difficulty getting support for. To give in more insight into the General Research Grant, I asked past grantees to answer a few questions about their experience. I asked them, how was the application process? How did getting this funding contribute to your career or training? How did you pick a topic? And what advice would you give to future applicants? Our first insight comes from the current grantee, Dr. Linda Hasadsri. Linda is a clinical biochemical genetics fellow at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. She felt that the application process was concise and straightforward. While the application may be simple, developing a topic took a few months of preparation. Linda found her research project topic through reading a newly published study on primary hyperoxaluria type 3. Since this study had discovered that an enzyme deficiency results in the buildup of 4-hydroxy-2-oxoglutarate, or HOG, in the kidneys, Linda hypothesized that measuring HOG in urine could be used for disease diagnosis or treatment management for pH 3. For Linda, it was important to her to influence patient care with her project, and the general research grant allowed her that opportunity through independent funding. Linda feels that getting this funding is contributing to her career and training in many ways. One of the requirements for Linda's fellowship is the completion of a research project pertinent to the diagnosis of inborn errors of metabolism. The Wofton Fellows pick a project already designed by a program director. The VSF General Research Grant allowed Linda the opportunity to design and fund her choice of project. Linda offers some great practical advice and encouragement for future applicants. She suggests you focus on small, practical experiments and use the knowledgeable technicians, staff, and faculty around you to help with your project. Finally, she advises to make sure you have known true positive patients if you're carrying out the development of a new diagnostic assay. Our second grantee was the recipient of the General Research Grant in 2012, Dr. Mari DeMarco, who currently works at St. Paul's Hospital and the University of British Columbia in Canada. Like Linda, Mari felt that the application process was straightforward, but sufficient time is still needed to finish the application. She emphasizes ensuring to keep the one-year time frame in mind when designing the project scope. Since the VSF General Research Grant awards limited research funds to explore new ideas in areas where funds are not normally available, Mari chose a topic that fit this scope. The grant allowed her to cover the expenses to design a mass spectrometric assay for identifying microorganisms in urine. Her results significantly reduced the turnaround time for this testing, offering a real clinical impact. As she was a fellow when she obtained the funding, the general research grant helped Mari obtain experience in an area she had interest in, and the data generated has contributed to her current proteomics research platform as she has moved to employment. Additionally, it has added strength to her future grant applications. The advice that Mari would give to future applicants is to not bite off more than they can chew by planning for a realistic one-year timeline. But other than that, the sky is the limit, so use this opportunity to be creative. Remember, young investigators are given preference for these grants, so it's a great opportunity for cycle members. 
If you are interested in applying for the General Research Grant, take the advice of past grantees and start planning now for the March deadline. For details on the application process, navigate to the Van Slyke Foundation section of the AACC website. Good luck to all applicants.